was not an expert, but I was trying to persuade the expert in making that argument. I think that the Court got the instructions wrong on how to do that, and I believe that it's an abuse of discretion to not do that. And as a result, my burden is a lot higher to prove the abuse of that discretion. So if I'm telling the Court that it's an abuse of discretion, I think that's what I'm doing. Any other questions? I can talk more if you like, but I'm not going to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
going to use it in a claim limitation, you're probably going to have that same level of evidence that just goes in another way. Give me a clear fact that goes in another way. There are so many factual problems that really have to be ah. resolved. Well, hello there. Welcome to the party. Let me give you a S O. Why though? Why do you mean why though? Why though? Because it's mine. Because I am Kiara Strings. Because I am a trans woman. And because this is the early, early stream. And anytime, Chloe. How are you this, I'm guessing, afternoon over there? It's six in the morning. Uh, but how are you? How is every pony doing on this Wednesday? Just having a murder hot chocolate. An absolute murderous hot chocolate. It's 11.17 at night. You should probably get to bed. I'm kidding. And you're okay? Glad you are. Just tinkering with VR stuff? Excellent. Just tinkering with VR stuff. I hope your I hope your girlfriend knows that you're tinkering, wink wink. Whoa. That is that is pretty coral, slash that is scary. I don't know why, but that seems a little bit scary. For me, that seems scary. That is cute, but I don't think you that means what you think it means. Oh, I know what it means. I definitely know what it means. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. Oh, I definitely know what it means. <laughs> it means you are doing something with VR and you're paying attention to VR more than your girlfriend. Okay, maybe you're just giving them equal attention. But I know you're doing things on VR that you don't want to talk about on streams. You know? I know that. And I also know that in uh, four, five, six hours, in six hours, I get to uh, bisect that it's going to be streaming. But what are you doing with VR? Voice recording? Murder. Yep, murder. I'm getting mods to work on Skyrim and Fallout. Well, eh, I mean, also got VR cooking game. You got voiceover cooking game? That's excellent. And a graffiti game? All right, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear about all that. I hope it act, I hope it does work out well. But um, also trying to get Payday to work in VR. Payday? That is a game, right? So I can rob and murder. Just do it in real life. Do it in real life. I believe in you. I, Chloe, I believe you can rob and murder in real life. This is not the 19th... Oh, bank robbery game? Uh, of course you can do it in the game, but what about real life? This is not the 1920s anymore. Yes, you can rob a bank in real life. Yeah, this isn't a ninth this is the this is the ninth this is not the nineteen twenties anymore. Yes, you can. You can and you will. I believe in you. Kind of sort of. I believe in you. Nauseam, welcome to the party. How are you, bread and tentacles? The bread saying hello. 
What did I step into? Oh, it's nothing. We just, uh, thank you for shouting nauseam out. How are you, first of all? Um, and are you doing good in school? You, you stepped into the early, early stream. But we, uh, we were discussing, we were discussing robbing banks in the 1920s. As you should. Not only discuss robbing banks in games, but robbing banks in general. You know, because uh, it's funny. I'm always good. I'm glad that you're always good. Um, I hope you're eating a lot of bread. This is the 2010s. So, it's not the 1920s. I hope I can get it to work. You better get it to work. Otherwise, if you don't get it to work, I will sue. We have a new people to sue. You know, the people who are in VR. I'm afraid I need to make more. I'm afraid I'm out. Okay, then go ahead and we are going to rob a bank. Just you, me, and Invisible Girl. We are going to rob a bank and we are going to get you that money. We are going to make that mad, mad cheddar. Is that what the kids are saying? Cheddar instead of money? Sounds like a plan. We are going to Ocean's Eleven this bit. We are going to Ocean's Eleven this bit. Okay, so there's three of us. We can get Epolite, Bisected. Um, we need at, we're going to need at least six more people. Who are we going to get? I'll show you how to Ocean's Eleven it. We're going to need... We're gonna need six people. We can totally Ocean's Eleven it. We have a, we have five people. We have five people already. Aren't they up to like Ocean's Thirty Five? Um, there's a, here's the thing. Last I remember, um, they only did up to Ocean's Thirteen. Like, the new ones, the ones with George Clooney, only go into like Ocean's uh. 13 only oceans 13 there was always 11 people um they only stopped because bernie mac passed away in 2008 and so george clooney said okay there's not going to be any of those movies anymore because george clooney i mean bernie mac passed away and as of 2019 um another cast member um, Carl Reiner died as well. So they are not going to do any uh, any George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Matt Damon movies. Um, so as long as we don't have that horrible jo Don Cheadle um, accent, like when he tried to speak in a London accent and he has like more... Um, he has more... He has a more offensive accent than Dick Van Dyke in, um, in, uh, Mary Poppins. Actually, I don't know who's wor who has the worst accent, actually. Who has the worst accent? Don Cheadle in Ocean's Eleven? Or Dick Van Dyke in, um, Mary Poppins? There are I have my I have to share my favorite fact with you. There are fourteen Airbud movies. I, I realized that only four of them went to theaters. I have the second one, um, Airbud Golden Retriever. Um, guess I have to make the fifteenth in the movies game. You do not want it. You do not want to, Chloe. That means they're just going to go directly to DVD because nobody cares about Airbud anymore. Um. Also, I have no idea what Air Bud is. Um, their movie is about a gold. It was originally about a golden retriever playing sports. It was basketball. It was uh, football. It was um, yeah, it was other things. And then it just spun off to like little cutie Air Buddies, little cutie um, golden retrievers, like going into space for some reason. His kids go into space in the later ones. They couldn't... What? They couldn't afford his... What? They couldn't afford his ghosts? They couldn't afford to get another golden retriever? It would go directly to YouTube. Oh, yeah. Here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing. I'm... I can... I can tell you right now, Chloe. I can absolutely tell you right now that those movies are going to make bank. 
if they were five minute videos, five minute cute videos, and that's fine. If it goes over five minutes and it goes directly to DVD, that is going to be bad. Just like Space Buddies, it's so bad. From what I understand, it's about like these uh, buds, uh, kids who accidentally get shot up into space, and it's like, when you, when you just like. I don't know when you wouldn't it be much easier to just bring the little dogs back because it's not like they have like dog food on standby. It's like okay, these little these uh little uh, golden retrievers have been shot up into space with astronauts. The astronauts do not have. I mean, it's really unknown that the astronauts probably have like. The little golden retrievers um, up with them, and then by the time they do, they're like, "Oh crap! What do we do?" It's like, well, you can't really give them people food. You really can't give them people food, and you're just so essentially you're just dooming. Um, unless you, unless they become, you know. Unless those little air buddies become the first dog into space, in which case they accidentally get left behind. And they end up like the first dog that went to outer space. Like, there's no return point, and slowly but surely, well, that will be the end of little air buddies. OMG, that will make a great game. A VR movies game. Oh. I mean, that I'm pretty sure they already have that, like, they have 3D movies, so why not VR movies? You can be in the movie. That would be so amazing. I taught Lee Carter about this, and it still cracks me up. Yeah, that's something nobody, nobody asked for those little Air Bud movies. Nobody. Nobody asked for those movies. Like, did anybody... Did you ask for those movies? Did you ask for those movies? I certainly didn't ask for those movies. Not even when I actually got Air Bud Golden Retriever when I was eight years old. And keep in mind, I used to watch the crap out of that. <clears throat> I used to watch the crap out of that second movie. But. But. I knew it wasn't a good movie. I knew that was not a good movie. But I watched it because I was a kid. And as a kid, you would watch a movie over and over again to sometimes pass the time. <sighs> kill kids? I mean, um, yeah. You know, kill babies, kids. Yes, I asked for it just to annoy you. I'm not just annoyed, just surprised. Because nobody, it wasn't, it's not annoying to me. It's just that it's baffling to other people. It's absolutely baffling to people who, um... Because nobody's asking for air buds. I think Lee Carter's line was, this is how you can tell capitalism is an efficient system. How? Just by, like, putting out an air bud movie that doesn't even have air... Like, get an actual golden retriever. That's... The, here's the thing. Forget a... Forget about... Forget about making cute little movies. Why don't you just actionize it instead of making it a family movie? Like a golden retriever is a spy. Actually, it would be really bad. Like a uh, space monkey or ninja monkey or whatever. But, you know, attempt, you know. Make it a Turner and Hoot situation. You know? It'll be fun. Just get a golden retriever. Um, make, uh, put him, put him in a Tequil and Benetti setting, except the dog cannot talk. And then at the end, the dog gets shot and dies. <clears throat> Can I be bothered to 3D model my glasses? Go ahead. Suppose you, I have to. Do it. Make your dreams come true. Just remake Iron Sky with but it's dogs. Or you know, remake uh, World Trade Center except with dogs. Remake Tropic Thunder except with dogs. 
And the dogs are just complete a-holes and idiots. I really want to see that. I want to see... I want to see Air Bud, except with, like... Except... How about Air Bud? Air Bud with a remake of Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now crossed with Airbud. Remake 101 Dalmatians but with dogs. Oh, let let me let me get to that. I have to lurk because I'm working early. Good luck. Okay, uh thank good luck with the work. And I hope that okay, wait. What do you mean okay, wait? Well, I'm going to say good luck with the tr work and I'm going to block you. I'm kidding. Have you read Cat Isht Meow? Nope. Never even heard of it. But I ended up posing that it actually has something to do with cats. Uh, I'm gonna need a cigarette after this. But have you ever heard of, uh,. 9-11 Airlines. It's a manga that's based in Vietnam, but with animals. Oh, okay, that will... I never heard about that. Okay, so I'm guessing that is, like... I'm guessing that's accidentally a, a thing that I mentioned. It's really good. I'll, I'll look into it. I'll absolutely look into it, because that... I'll look into it right now, because I want to see cat ish meow. Excuse me. Um, um I, th I think it's called cat ish one cat ish one It's called Apocalypse Meow. Duh. Oh, goodness. I hope you're proud of yourself. But the, the, the manga's called Cat Isht One, not Cat Isht Meow. And I don't think it has much to do with cats. I think it was just like a rabbit. I, th I don't think it's like mostly that. I think it's just mostly like. Cat S1 is the brief American reboot. Uh, let me see. Well, honestly, I'm I'm looking at it up right now. Cat S1 is the brief um, anime reboot. Um, I'm looking at I'm looking at things right now, but I don't see cat ished meow. Like. I'll show you. Watch. Because, like, I'm looking it up, but it says Cat Isht 1. I googled Cat Isht Meow, but there's only Cat Isht 1. And it says it's a three volume manga series. And it was retitled Apocalypse Meow, which uh, you told me yes, but it's not called Cat Isht. Isht meow. It's called cat isht one. Yeah, I was wrong. It's apocalypse meow. Well, I mean apocalypse meow. Apocalypse meow seems like the better title, doesn't it? Like, why cat isht one or cat isht meow? It should be cat. I mean apocalypse meow. It that could be. It's pretty much like going between live die repeat. Or Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow is a dumb title. So why pick that over Live, Die, Repeat? So Edge of Tomorrow is like Cat S1. As... No, wait. Live, Die, Repeat is... Apocal... Uh, Live, Die, Repeat is Apocalypse Meow. As... Edge of Tomorrow is Cat S1. 
And what do you mean, no, Chloe? What do you mean, no? Why? But I hope you have a good time at work. Um, if you have to lurk, because you have to work early, I hope you work treats you well. I don't remember. Ugh. Yeah, I've been there. I have to lurk. My friend is about to beat one of my favorite games. Is it Sonic the Hedgehog? Sonic 06? Also work? You have to... Oh, you have to work on looking at your friend who is about to beat one of your favorite games. But that's totally fine. I hope everything goes out well for you. Nauseam. It's Turing Test? I have never heard of that game. Is it the game of life? Yes, it is. And also... R.I.P.D. the person who actually created the Game of Life. Because that person actually passed away yesterday. The person actually died yesterday. The person who actually made um, Game of Life. Ruben Klamer died yesterday. The creator of the board game Game of Life passed away yesterday. Ruben Klamer. Yeah, right here. Right here. Speaking of Game of Life. Uh, Ruben Klamer, creator of the Game of Life, dies at 99. So I'm guessing he lost because he was supposed to make it out of 100. I'm guessing that he, lo he lost the Game of Life. So I don't think he's much of a creator now that he's dead one year short. <laughs> too soon? I'm guessing that's too soon. But, you know, that's life. That is absolutely life. He lost the game. Probably because he talked about the game of life. You lost all the game. R.I.P.D. Rupin Claimer. You're, you're the creator of game of... You are the creator of life. And now you are... Death. You are the game of death. You lost the game of life, and now you're going into the game of death. Life played you. My friend, life played you. Wow. I Sometimes I got dark. I could get dark in, like, talking about, you know, death. Yeah. But, yeah. So I hope every pony's good. We are one third of the way into this early, early stream, and I do want to talk about something that I I was uh uh I was I want to talk about a dream I had. I don't know if I had it before yesterday's stream or after yesterday's stream, but I want to discuss something very weird about a dream yesterday. So, I actually ended up, in my dream, ended up being friends with Jeff Bridges. You know, the dude from The Big Lebowski. But he's better known for, uh... You know, his role in Iron Man. Which everybody should, honestly... Everybody should flat out see Jeff Bridges as more than the dude. He's a very versatile actor. He's, and I'm not joking about this. He is a very versatile actor. If you see him in, like, watch movies like Fearless, The Fisher King, and people tend to forget that he was in the Tron movies. Like, granted, I watched both those movies in 20, 20, 2012, and I have, I cannot tell you a single thing, not what happens in it, but I do not know the plot of either of them. I have no idea what those movies are about. All I know is that it was like, like, they looked good for the time. Although I do like the, um, I do really, really, really like the, um, I actually do like the design of the 80s one. Like, don't get me wrong. The effects for the 20, uh, for Tron Legacy were really good. 
but for some reason the original's dated graphics and the dated special effects actually has some sort of charm to it. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm so used to like the 80s not having much CGI. Like if you look through 2012, I mean 2021 20, eyes and you watch the original Tron movie, it does seem dated, but it just lull you into this security. It just lulls you into like this thing. It just lulls you in to like this dream state. And yes, I know it's in a game, but it just makes it all the more classic. But maybe it's because the it's dated, but it's dated in the best type of way. Does anybody else have that uh, feeling where it's just dated, but it's dated in the best possible way? You know, it's like, yeah, there's a, it's a special effect failure, but it just makes it a lot more authentic. Like, it's like, hey, these effects aren't perfect, but you can tell that the creators actually have put effort into it, and they could actually not only get through a lot of it, but you can tell that there is effort into it. Chloe doesn't know? Okay, that's totally fine. You could think of it, um, but like, like, before I go any further, like, I was just talking about how, Je like, how Jeff Bridges is, like, a versatile actor, and people should not see him as just the dude from The Big Lebowski. But anyways, so I had this dream where I was friend, me and another friend of mine were friends with a dude, and, uh, you know, something, like, I have no idea what happened, but, uh, I was outside of a supermarket, and I was talking to somebody, and for some reason, Jeff Bridges, like, throughout the adventure, he was pretty chill and all that, and then for some reason, he gets out of the supermarket, and he's running, He's sprinting back to his car, and I'm seeing this, I'm going, okay, I might as well just go too, so I sprint back at the car as well, and we find out, like, I look back, me and my friend look back at the window, and we are just looking, and we're like, wait a minute, like, there's some, there's like the supermarket owner right behind us, and it's like, well, the supermarket owner's not gonna do anything, and so we started laughing. And, and then immediately, like, not a minute later, the police are on our tail, and they catch us. And then the dream ends before the police officer, like, the police officer could tell us to get our heads out of the, like, get out of the car. Like, I legitimately willed myself out of that dream. I'm like, can you step out of the vehicle, please? And I'm like, nope. I close my eyes, and then I wake up. So, as far as I know, uh, my friend who I've never seen and Jeff Bridges, Dream Jeff Bridges, um, just got out on bail and are awaiting trial, where their mysterious third friend mysteriously disappeared. So I probably just left them, like, holding the bag. Yeah. Some friend, well, some friend, some friend I am, where it's like almost 24 hours later, it's like, wait, what happened to our friend? You know, they, she was supposed to be here, but she disappeared. Damn coppers. I can't do a Jeff Bridges impression, um, but I sure as hell tried. I tried to do a Jeff Bridges impression right there, but, um, yeah, what do you know? I can't do one. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, that's pretty funny. But also, my video essay is going well. I've edited two minutes of the last, like, I only have three, three minutes and 50 seconds of my latest video essay to edit, and then I'm gonna put it all together. And also, I am 75, 70, 70% done on uh, writing um, 
on writing a, uh, the ninth video essay. Like, I'm pretty much done writing, I'm done writing the intro, I'm done writing the outro, the first paragraph is almost done, and, um, when I wake up, I'll just write a little bit more, and when I get to work, I will, uh, write the second and final paragraph, because I know exactly what to write. So, if things actually do go well, I would have finished writing my video essay, um, tonight. And then on Friday, when I actually finish writing the video essay, at the same time, I'm going to put together my video essay, which is number, my video essay number eight. And then I am going to not only put together the eighth video essay, but I'm going to do the voiceover for the ninth video essay. And then I'm going to edit the intro and outro. So I am trying to do a lot, like a little bit, because like I'm going to start editing that ninth video essay on Sunday, like the main meat and bones of it, because I'm trying to edit at least two minutes a day. And then Friday, I am going to edit the rest so it can have a Saturday release. And at the same time, I'm going to edit the last video essay of the season, and then I'm going to keep working. Um, which, speaking of which, I decided to, like, make my next few, my next season of video essays, like, eight video essays long. Because, like, um, the first set of video essays was 12 videos long. This set of video essays is 10 videos long. And the next one's going to be eight. So, I want to make it an even 30. Like, I want to make 30 video essays, at least. Why 30? Because I am 30. Well, actually, come to think of it, um, wait a minute. So by the time I actually, no, probably 31. I'll be 31 uh, by the time the 30th video essay is probably re released. Okay, I just want to make it an even 30. I should have just quit while I had and stopped at 10 video essays. Um, but, um, yeah. Um, but also, um, I actually do want to talk about um, something that I was on Pit Princess streams about. So yesterday, um, I was... Um, so before work, I mean, before work ended, I was um, on Pit Princess stream. And uh, I was discussing with her and the chat about something called and it's it's something that I do want to discuss in a video essay and it's a topic of intellectual crushes and when I mean intellectual crushes I mean not like people you want to say see like oh that person's attractive like that person's like really attractive outwardly and they're like really really so and so like I really have a crush on them like so yada 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 I what I mean is like they're really smart and you're not even intimidated you just want to know more about them and you like them because of how they present themselves like how they speak how they like m like how they you're really attracted to how um to how they present themselves. Not like outwardly, but what's in their head, what they discuss, what they talk about. And I didn't think that they were called um, intellectual crushes. Like the, the closest I actually had to an intellectual crush was um, through my friend. My friend, so here's the thing. My friend is a huge history buff. Like, he absolutely loves studying history. He makes historical in-jokes a lot. He is the person who got me into... Um, he is the same friend who got me into um, Mass Effect. He also was the same friend who got me into uh, Fallout. Albeit, it took me a while, but it seemed like an interesting game. However, 
um, in high like we've known each other since um, 2005 but we didn't become friends more until 2006 or 7 and uh, like I said before he was he is a very big history person and so um, in the 12th grade we had two history classes together um, American history and um, yeah American history and uh, what was it called Canadian history I'm not sure I forgot like but we had in two in one semester we had two history classes together and uh, yeah we had two history classes together and the thing about that is that um, not only were we both of us both of us actually did have history classes together but there was one other person Canadians don't have history, silly. Oh, that's right. We have no history. As Dr. Snorlax would say, we are a nation that does not exist. They are the syrup. Exactly. We are the syrup. You are the tea. I'm being so stereotypical. Even though I don't have a Canadian accent as far as anybody knows. So I'm kind of disappointed. But... So there was two of us in the in two of us in two history classes, but there was one more person, and so what ended up happening was this one person actually really wanted to get a better grade in history. We should make a wiki for the lore of Kiara's Canada. Um, what about my prom? But um, but here's the thing. So. This, uh, this third person who was an acquaintance of ours, somewhat friend, maybe a friendly enemy, um, specifically to my friend, um, what ended up happening was, like, she would study very hard to get amazing grades for history. And meanwhile, uh, my friend, who doesn't really need to study history because he is a buff, he is like an expert in history. Like, it's nothing for him. He has like textbooks. He has books on American history and all that. And so he would pass history classes with flying colors. And whenever we had a test, I would actually have like, you know, a grade which like a B plus or a B minus or C plus. I'm like, I don't care. I had a, a passing grade. It's, it's no big deal, honestly. Meanwhile, uh... The third person who was in both of our history classes would end up like she would end up like with a really good grade. My friend would actually be pla passing with flying colors to the point where his grades would be better than hers. And there are some moments where I'm not sure, like he didn't know that, but I could feel her death glare. Not to me, but to my friend. Because every time he has a better grade than her, I could feel the death glare. I can feel her staring at my friend, even when I'm not looking at her. Like, I could be looking away and I'd be like, oh my god, she's just staring daggers at my friend. She is staring legitimate daggers at my friend. And in my mind, in the back of my mind, I'm like, she probably likes him. And I'm like, no, that's that's crazy talk. That's crazy talk. Like, that is legitimately crazy talk. That is, that's crazy. Like, nobody, nobody could actually look like they hate somebody because they actually do something better. But, no, it ended up being true. Like, as uh, my friend would later discuss with me, Hi, Bisected. Welcome to the party. How are you? Uh, may we have a shout out for bisected brioche, please? Um, hold on. I just want to just I want to actually like get through this. So, um, long. Thank you for shouting her out. Um, long story short. Later on, my friend actually told me that yes, she had a crush on him intellectually. You know. She actually did have a crush on my friend intellectually. It was hate, but it was pretty much like Helga from Hey Arnold kind of hate. 
Like, it's like a hate, like, not, I wouldn't call, I think it was vitrolic. Like, it was more of a slap, slap, kiss, kiss, except without the kiss, but the sentimentality was still there. And so, yeah, um, he was surprised, but to me, I'm like, oh, okay, that seems like, yeah, yeah, that, that bisected, absolutely that. Um, yeah, um, she had a crush on him intellectually. She had an intellectual crush on my friend. And I'm like, yeah, that does make sense. Like, because there are people out there who do like people who are very smart. Who are very, very smart. And some people are intimidated, but there are other people who are like, so I want to pick your brain for a minute. Like, I think you're very smart and, uh, you know, you're probably a nice person. Which he is. He, my friend is a nice person. Um, and because of, like, he does have that nerdy quality. As, yeah, he does have that nerdy quality. Um, he's very smart. Um, he's the person who introduced me to TV tropes, too. Yeah, he is the same person who introduced me to TV tropes. So, um... Yeah, so, um... So he's very smart, and, like, there was a couple of times where I did... I personally... I personally... I'm going to admit it right now, just a couple of times where I had a crush on him. And this is my best friend. My best friend who is a cis male and is... 100% straight, as far as I know. He is 100% straight. I'm pretty sure he has his moments of, like, stupid, sexy Flanders. But, I did have a crush on him a couple of times, and then it's like, yeah, it's completely gone. And this was pretty much when I was in high school, when I was just finding out that I was bisexual. Because I had a crush on a lot of guys and girls, so yeah, uh, pretty much. Um, but how are you, bisected? Um, sorry if I just rambled on. Um, I was talking about intellectual crushes. And uh, I was thinking about doing a video essay on that. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what? On another stream, I just want to discuss video, like, not video essays intellectual crushes and i have a couple of not bad how my first um ever regular duty shift in the last night congratulations bisected um i hope it absolutely went well like i really hope it went well um i really hope it did um ooh, okay so now chloe's a, a ghost now chloe is a ghost R.I.P.D. Glowy. Got misgendered by a customer 15 minutes in, but otherwise it was good. Tell you what, bring that customer to me. Find out where that customer lives. Bring them to me. And, uh, you know, I will, uh, you know, sue them. I will sue them Canadian style. I'm always a ghost. No, you're always invisible. You're not always a ghost. But yeah, um, like, I'm pretty sure a lot of us have intellectual crushes. A lot of us do have intellectual crushes. Like, I have a couple of intellectual crushes. Um, I, did I just say a couple? Um, yeah, I have a few. Um, but, but. Like, ghosts are uninvisible. Then how are you typing? Um, ghosts can't... Are you Casper? But, um, yeah, I have a couple of intellectual crushes on Twitch. Like, they are on Twitch. Like, the people who... Two of the people... Poltergeist? Yeah, we're gonna have to call, uh, Ru uh Zelda Rubenstein. You have... You have a Twitch streamer who is a ghost. This Twitch streamer is evil. 
I haven't seen a ghost this evil. What's the name? Unvisible girl? Oh, no. We're gonna have to get the heavy-duty poltergeist kit ASAP. I'm gonna need to get paid in advance. You should all get cable. And not the Canadian cable. I mean actual cable. Impossible. Casper's friendly. Oh, that is true. I mean, there's a difference between Casper of the ghost and uh, Invisible Girl of the ghost. One is absolutely friendly. The other is Invisible Girl. I mean, I didn't have to make that joke, but I made it anyways. VR Plasmophobia in October. You can do that. We are go I am going to do a watch party in October. A watch party of all three Human Centipede movies. All three of them. All three Human Centipede movies on October 30th. Or, uh, yeah, October 30th. Because uh, Halloween is going to be on a Sunday. So I'm not going to be able to stream. But... Yeah, I am going to do a watch party on uh, The Human Centipede. All three of them. Uh, and just to, war just to heads up, if, you, and if, if any of you have alcohol, bring it to me because I'm going to be drinking a lot of hot chocolate. That's right, hot chocolate in Canada is alcohol. But I was talking about... I was talking about... Intellectual crushes. Now, um, intellectual crushes, I want to, like, again, I have a couple of intellectual crushes, like, Abigail, like, I was discussing this with Pit Princess on her stream and a couple of, uh, people in chat. I have an intellect, apparently, like, I can look up to people, but I would also have a crush on them because of their minds and how they work. Um, so I, so apparently I have an intellectual crush on Abigail Beck. I have an intellectual crush on, um, yeah, I have an intellectual crush on Abigail Beck, who I, um, yeah, I have an intellectual crush on her. And she's streaming right now. I'm lurking her stream right now. I did rate her yesterday, so that's fine. And also, I have an intellectual crush on MX Emily, who has not streamed uh, so far this week. But I do have an intellectual crush on her as well. Because I look up to them, and I find them, like, really, really smart. And it's not to say that the people who I don't follow aren't also really smart because, like... But those are the two main people who I think are very... Why does it say check out Kiara Strings on their Twitch? It's supposed to say check out... Like, check out... You know? But, um... Yeah, I have an intellectual crush on... A couple of people. Mainly those two. And, um... You know, Kiara becomes one of their... One with their crushes. I did not... Here's the thing. I denied it. Like, I'm like... I told Pit Princess I don't have a crush on Abigail Beck. I just look up to her. And, uh... She was like, well, you can actually, like, have a crush on somebody... Who is, like, very smart. And I'm like, well, that's true. That actually explains my, like, second... My half-second crush on my friend. Um, you know? But, uh, yeah. But I do not want to become one with a crush. Because I want to be my own person, but still lo look up to them. And I know that... I absolutely know... I know, I know that I shouldn't look up to my heroes and put them on a pedestal because, you know, um, the people who, who look up, the people who you look up to are human as well. 
as far as I know, they're human. But the people who you look up to and want to aspire to be are also human. And they do make mistakes. I've, like, we've all have to accept the fact that there is no such thing as the perfect human being. Because, you know, won't that get old? Um, but we, like, humans are not, the people who you look up to are not superhuman. As far as I know. But, um, yeah, they're not superhuman. But at the same time, you know, at the same time, you can't help but aspire to be them and then make your different path. Because that's how people who you look up to should be, you know? You look up to them and you they inspire to make your own path. Like... Because of several factors, I ended up, like, wanting to, like, to, like, make my own stream, like, Emily and Abigail, and I have. It, like, but compared my stream, I don't want to compare, but compare my stream to their stream, my stream is pretty much like a quietly performing sister show. It's not, it doesn't get as much of an audience, but, um... It's a really good audience, and I'm really glad for the people who do come out and watch it. It's not much, but sometimes it's great. Sometimes, like... Yeah, you don't get that audience, like, you, um, that, that amount of audience that you're, the people who you look up to get. But sometimes, it does not matter. Like, I've been forced to learn that I can't compare myself to other people, you know? No matter how much... No matter how much, um... No matter, like, no matter how much... Hi, Bailey Gaming! How are you? Welcome to the party! Thank you for the host. How are you? And how, and if you uh may we get a shout out for Bailey Gaming please? She is back. She is back with a vengeance. She was originally Lady Hedgehog, but she did a brand new rebranding. She rebranded after like a couple of a while off and she branded. She rebranded. I almost why did I say branded? It's like Lady um so Bailey, Ga Bailey Gaming actually comes back and started branding people. Like, she actually got a poker, heated it, and started branding her name on people. And if you do not follow Bailey, please follow her, or I will sue. Gay and loot as ever. Well, I'm bi and okay as ever. I'm absolutely bi and okay. You know? Good lord, I hate this. I'm bi and lewd. But I'm also... I'm also trans and lewd. Just give me a minute. Give me a minute. Damn it. But I hope you're doing okay. I'm not only buying loot, but I'm trans and loot. And nothing's gonna stop me now. Don't go giving me ideas, hun. Oh, I'm well past that point. I am well past that point, my friend. My dear Bailey. I am well past that point. I'm almost six months into my HRT. And I'm well past that point of giving people ideas. A best combo, more like perfect combo. The month belongs to the gays. Ah, I see. But I hope you had an amazing first stream with the new branding. 
I really hope you had a really, really good first stream. Uh, with the uh, rebranding. Because it looks really good. I am. I am. I've been resting after having a blood test this morning. Somebody took your blood? Wait, somebody took your blood? Tell me who. I will come. I will go to them and I will sue them and I will take your blood back and I will inject your blood back. Was Vampire Kitty? Vamp. Wait, Kitty stole Bailey's blood? Okay. Okay. Bailey, I'm going to get your blood back. I'm going to get your blood back and I am going to inject it back into you. Um. That sounded wrong out of context. But, you know what I mean. And if I can't sue, if I can't get your blood back, I'm going to have to call the Welker. I'm going to... I did. It was shorter than normal, but I had a blast. I'm glad that you had a blast. Like, I was lurking throughout the entire stream. But... Honestly, if if they don't give your blood back, I'm going to have to call Frank Welker. All I have to do is, like, he's pretty much like the Candyman. All I have to do is just say his name three straight times and he will appear. Not in person, but through voice. It's okay, I need to have my levels checked so I can spare that little bit. Okay, but do they use your blood for anything other than the gay gene? Like, you know, getting your blood, like putting your blood so they can actually make the gay gene even gayer, then I am going to have to, like, cut somebody. I'm going to have to call the Welker. And he'll know what to do. Because once I call on Welker, there's no stopping. There's no stopping the Welker. So we were talking about um, intellectual crushes um, earlier on. Um, uh, and I was talking about how I can't... I, I honestly cannot... Yeah, I cannot compare myself to my intellectual crushes. And, like, sometimes you just need to blaze your own path. And, um... Yeah, you just need to blaze your own path, and that's the best you can do. And that is completely okay. Welcome back, Nauseam. We missed you. Like what I've done with the place? I did absolutely nothing when you were gone. Um, but honestly, honestly, like, I want I want to do this discussion for at least another 25 minutes. Place is looking good. Thank you. Run quick, she's going to deagle you. Deagle you? I've never heard of that. Deagle you? No idea. But I... Like, I want to discuss more on intellectual crushes. Like, did anybody look at some desert eagle? Oh, okay. I don't have any guns. I don't have guns. I do not care. It's a Counter-Strike thing. Okay. Like, I've never played Counter-Strike. Well, I haven't played Counter-Strike in, like, years. Like, I played, like, 80 hours of that game, and that's it. It's beyond CS, and I, as I do, don't do CS. That's totally fine. But, um, yeah, does, like, I want to keep discussing this intellectual crush for at least another 24 minutes, and then I have to talk about something else. But does anyone have that moment where you just look at a person and you see how they discuss, how they talk, and how they, like, talk, yeah, how they talk to people, like, how they present themselves, how they talk, how they are? Because, and you just go... I really, 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 really like this person because of their brains. 
I really like them intellectually. Like, it's a hardcore crush, because every time I hear that their voice, and I hear them discussing something that is passionate, you just go, your brain, you just melt. You genuinely just melt. I'm a gun person. We hate those people. I see. I don't, I'm not a gun person. I'm more of a, a tall glass of water person. You know? Tall glass of water. Speaking of which, I actually haven't had a tall glass of water in a few days because I've been editing, but that's beside the point. So, um, yeah. Um, intellectual crushes. Like, they're, like, I didn't realize that they were a thing until, like, yesterday. I mean, there was the, it was brought upon, like, a few years ago by my friend, but, um, yeah, like, I can't, I, I couldn't even just I couldn't really put think of a term I couldn't think of a term it was by my end it's my end like I do this like watch and it's open like this yeah I also eat hate Diego okay that I mean I don't I don't I'm not a gun person so I wouldn't know much but um yeah, like, having intellectual crushes is just, like, amazing, because you have, um, like, you see more and more of this person the more they talk. Like, their passion, Desert Eagles are mean guns, they're garbage to shoot. Okay, so they're pretty much like, um, they're pretty much like, um, are they like the Ross Rifle? Like, Desert Eagles are to meme guns as the Ross Rifle is to actual guns. Like, both of them are just bad. Of someone firing it and it's smacking them in the face. That's pretty funny. But, um... Yeah. But, um... Yeah, does anybody have intellectual... Has anybody actually had intellectual crushes? Because I want to just keep going with this. Because... I know I'm not the only one who just looks at a person, sees like sees how they talk and go, I want to be that person. Plus they weigh about the same as an actual assault rifle, which misses the po entire point of pistols. Yeah, how can you move around? Yeah, how can you move around quickly if you do if you like have to be like, okay, this is my desert eagle. <laughs> yeah, they're a mess. Um but, oh my, I just realized that I actually had an intellectual crush when I was in grade two. Holy God almighty, I had an intellectual crush on somebody when I was in the second grade. And it was on a guy. Oh my God. Oh my God, I had an intellectual crush on somebody when I was in the second grade. And he was a year older than me. Holy God Almighty. Oh my God. Holy crap. I just realized that. Oh my God. Oh. That realization from 1999. And it took over two decades to realize this. They fit with the agents, though. The Agent Smith agents? I have a friend somewhere on my video, somewhere on my French, a really short French reading of my 1911 and the barrel would beat him in the face every time. Some people just don't learn. They're just a glutton for punishment. Okay, I didn't realize I, I I didn't realize about this intellectual crush. Oh my god, holy god almighty! I'm like, oh my god. Okay, so when I was in the second grade, we our class shared 
a split grade class. Like, most of us was, were in the second grade, but there were a few third graders. And it just so happened that there was somebody who has the same, who was, who I had my intellectual crush on. He has the same name as my friend who was a history buff. I have a pic of it somewhere in one sec. Okay, Nauseam, go ahead and send it into Chloe's Discord. Um, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. So, I found him to be very smart. Like, I would follow him around during recess, and he would tell me to stop following him around. But I was just fascinated. I was legitimately fascinated by the way he talks, the way he moves. Like, he would, like, he... Like, he was a nerd looking back. He, 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 like, looking back, I thought he was a little, like, he seemed like a little bit of a nerd because he was smart and, but he, I, but I thought he was a cool person. He probably still is a cool person. And I'm like, oh my God, this person is, like, fascinating. And I wanted to, like, be as smart as him. And, like, I would follow him around. I would get some of his mannerisms somewhat and I just looked up to him and that was like going on for a year you know I did not realize that I had an oh my god I think it was a crush oh my god I, I think it was just a genuine crush on him and I had a crush on a girl who was five years younger than five years older than me. I I almost said five years younger. That would have been a problem since I was in the second grade. But I had a crush. I had a crush on a a guy who was a year older than me. In 1999. Oh my gosh. It's just a little crush. Well, would a little crush be following somebody around during recess for months at a time? Is that a little crush? I don't I don't think it was an, an actual little crush. And, like, this was back when my parents used to, like, my dad used to pick up my clothing. You can't find the pic now, but I'll post it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, no rush. But I like the band Rush. I'm so glad, I'm so depressed that they broke up. I have a Springfield loaded 11 with Parker's Eyes finish. I should probably introduce you to my friend who is a history major. Is only to make roomy jelly. You're gonna turn your roommate into jelly? Can you send me some if you do that? But I'm guessing when you mean jelly, you mean like blood. But um Okay, just 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 give me a minute. I'm just processing the fact that I had a crush on somebody who was a guy. This is this is way 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 before I came out as like trans or bisexual. This was like back when I was not. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Like. I have intellectual crushes now, but I didn't know I had intellectual crushes when I was in the second grade. My step is broken, so I can't take a new pick. Oh, I'm sorry. We need a drill. This is not a drill. Yeah, we do need a drill. We're gonna need six more people. At, like I said before, we are going to Ocean's 12 this bank robbery. I feel like about once a year I get hit with a realization hammer. 
Yeah, right? It just hits you. It, like, legitimately hits you. It hits your face. It hits your mind. Just like yesterday. Yesterday, I was in the middle of work, and then I just slowly started to realize, oh, my God. A couple of weeks ago, I came out to my mom as bisexual. And I was, sh I was legitimately, no joke, I was shaking on the inside while I was doing work. Like, the realization just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like, I was legitimately shaking. I was like, oh my god. Oh my god. And I thought I was going to have to, like, sit down or, like, take a breath. But I just kept on working. And I kept thinking. Like, I wanted to think about anything else. Because I'm like, I came out to my mom as bisexual. I, can't, I told my mom about my partner that I've been going out with for oh, for over two years. Like, the realization just hit me like a bunch of shrapnel. Like right now I'm listening like I'm listening to one of my intellectual crushes just talking about like she is like currently talking about I don't know what but at the same time it's like oh my god this intellectual cr like my intellectual crush Abigail Beck is just talking about something and she she makes it sound so easy you know and, like, you know, I, she makes it sound so, she does it so easy. And I know she's only human, but, uh, you know, I don't know how she does it. <sighs> Intellectual crushes. They are a thing. Found a random pick with the gun is in it. I'll toss it in the Discord. Okay, let's see. Let's see this uh, random pick with a gun. Let's see this. Let's see this. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. That is a lot of ammo I'm seeing. That is a lot of ammo. Interesting ammo. It's the one in the bottom right. Time to make roomy jelly indeed. Holy God almighty, that is a lot of guns. Again, I am not a gun person, but that is a lot of guns. That must have cost you a pretty penny. Making it easy is a coping mechanism, to be honest. It is, but at the same time, I'm like... Like, sometimes I'm, I I want to know how to improve on my streams, but I already have. Like, on my first streams, I didn't have a microphone. I didn't have proper lighting. I mean, granted, I still don't have proper lighting. But, um, you know, it's the 1911 is worth everything else in the pick combined. Only one I don't know is top left. Hey, listen, I don't know the names of any guns, so uh, bear with me. But um yeah. Oh god. I'm 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 sorry. I I'm really sorry. I'm just I'm I'm just taken aback about I'm taken aback. I'm I want to say that I'm beside myself. Oh my god. Oh, that, that just hit me. I'm going to be thinking about this all day, aren't I? So I actually had a crush on guys and girls. With it, well, maybe at the time, it's pretty much like, if it's you, it's okay. Oh my god. 
So I had a crush on, I pretty much had a crush on guys and girls. Even in the late 90s. Oh. I should probably upload this entire stream to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be honest. Maybe I should just upload this entire stream to my YouTube channel. Because I was only going to clip a piece of this stream. Yeah, I was going to only clip a piece of the stream talking about intellectual crushes. And then it just turned into a 50-minute discussion. Well, not... The, okay, you know what? Not the entire stream, just like... The last part of the stream. Like... The last... Like, the last 30 or 30 minutes of the stream. Or last 50 minutes of the stream. Because I was all over the place in terms of, um, topics and discussions. <sighs> I'm sorry, this is probably, like, my Wham! episode. Yeah, this is my Wham! episode. This is absolutely my Wham! episode. So... Just the realization that I had never, ever been straight. My God. This is what years and years of therapy will do to people, ladies and gentlemen, and all of those in between. Years of therapy will pretty, like, years of therapy and repression will just, like, bury some things into your mind and then it just comes out and it's like holy crap oh my god yeah this like from minute 45 or something to the end of the stream is just going to be uploaded to my channel oh my lord Okay. My I'm sorry, this is this is this is this is honestly one for the bucks. Like for the longest time I thought I only had crushes on women and then eventually I would have crush on men and women. I mean granted I still have like I, I to a lesser extent I do have crush intellectual crushes on other people. But it's mainly Abigail and um, Emily. Oh my god. But um, none that I am willing to discuss. Like, nothing I am willing to discuss because, quite frankly, I don't want to discuss much in terms of, like, you know... I don't want to discuss much in terms of uh, things and stuff. Things and stuff. But yeah, I don't want to discuss... Um, I don't want to like discuss much about um, other crushes. Like, I don't want to give the names out. Other than them, but, um, yeah, I want to, like, do the best I can. You know what? Yeah, I don't want to give names out, but, uh, yeah. Um, but, um, before, like, we are, we are almost on the stream. And I do want to talk about something fairly serious, people. Um, I do want to talk about something fairly serious. Um, yesterday, we, the comedy world, lost a droll, deadpan, but very peculiarly, f peculiarly funny comedian 
I don't know if many of you know his name. And his name is Norm MacDonald. He passed away yesterday. Um, many of you don't know who he is, but you have definitely heard his voice. You probably know some people, a lot of people know him from Saturday Night Live when he did Weekend Update. But more specifically, you probably know him from his the Celebrity Jeopardy skits that he did with Will Ferrell when he played Burt Reynolds. Um, you probably also know him from Mike Tyson Mysteries where he played Pigeon. Um, and, uh, I found him to be very, a very, very fascinating comedian. And it was a legitimate, legitimate, legitimate shock that he passed away and none of us knew that he was sick. I always liked him. He always made me laugh. One of my favorite books ever made was his book based off based on a true story where I've read about four times at this point and I'm not joking when I say this. Every time I read that book, I always laugh. I always have tears going down my face. Because of how funny the book is. The book is absolutely funny. And he was an absolutely funny person. And so... Before I make my leave... Right here... I want to... And before I lurk out... I want to... Um, I want to share a clip... I want to share... It's no problem, Nauseam. Um, We're just getting ready to wrap up. I want to show a clip of him at his absolute best. So, everybody, I want to introduce you to Norm MacDonald. So, everybody, enjoy. Was he okay though with it? He was cool. He was great. He did a wonderful job. Do you have a scene where you and and you, you and him embrace? Yeah, lots of making out. Oh for God's sake! <laughs> Nothing but making out. All right. It's like nine and a half weeks, but carrot top. <laughs> we were doing. Wow! <laughs> I gotta check out that movie. Is it called Nine and a Half Seconds? <laughs> premature ejaculated. You know, you know what happened? This is what happened. You know what happened? He said nine and a half seconds, and I'm looking at him because I know there's more. Then I wait and wait, and I see the glimmer in the eye, and then bang! I thought you were going to but no. But uh, what's the movie going to be called? Well, really? I know what it's going to be called. Yeah, what's that? If it's got Carrot Top in it, you know what a good name for it would be? What's that, Norm? Box Office Poison. <laughs> there too. She's in it. What about my career? Courtney Thorne Smith, the girl sitting to your left, is in the movie. I'm going to go see it for fun. <laughs> No, I love this girl. I would see any movie with this girl in it. She's a beautiful lady and, and a talented, nice talk show guest. As evidenced by her appearance on our rival show. All right, well, there's this two-hour season finale of Melrose Place. There's this movie coming out. Yeah. Title undetermined at this point. Chairman of the board. Oh, all right. Do something with that, you freak. <laughs> I, I bet the board is spelled B O R E D.
Jeff is solo in a second. Courtney Thorne-Smith. We hope she's still our friend. We do love you.